And we begin at five with the devastating fallout of gun violence across Portland. Family and friends have now identified a Somali refugee who was a father of eight as the victim in one of the most recent deadly shootings. Good evening, I'm David Mulko. And I'm Laurel Porter. The shooting happened at the corner of Northeast 82nd and Milton. That intersection has seen far too much violence in recent months. So let's bring in Mike Benner. Mike, his name is Shawnee Muhammad, and you talked to a close friend. That's right, I did, David, and this is beyond awful. Shawnee Muhammad left Somalia in order to escape the violence. He figured Portland would be a safe haven, but instead he was shot and killed. Now Muhammad's eight kids will grow up without a father. Just look at that photo. Look at that family, just heartbreaking. Friends tell us Muhammad was driving for Uber when he was shot and killed. It happened late Sunday night near Northeast 82nd and Milton. Muhammad is the fourth person to be gunned down at this intersection since August of last year. In fact, law enforcement is putting together a plan to address the violence there. It just doesn't come soon enough for the Muhammad family. In addition to being a Somali refugee, husband and father, Muhammad is remembered as a generous and quiet man who loved soccer and he will be missed. To hear that uh, he's no longer with us, it was very, very difficult to see because it's, it's, it's uh, somebody who came to the, to the community center with his family, somebody that we knew him. It's, it's difficult for our community and it's hard to move forward. Of course, there is never a good time for a family to deal with a tragedy like this, but Musa Lowell points out that this weekend is the beginning of Ramadan, a very family-oriented time for Muslims, so it's going to be extremely difficult for Shawnee Muhammad's family. Our thoughts are certainly with them. In the meantime, a GoFundMe has been launched to help the family with expenses. You can find a link to it on our website, KGW. Dot com. Laurel. Oh, just heart wrenching. I hope a lot of people do step up to support his family. Thank you, Mike. And Portland is also reeling from a spree of violence in the city starting yesterday evening. In all, five people were hurt in shootings in a span of just six hours. The first shooting was last night at about seven o'clock near Mount Scott Park. No one was hurt. One man was hurt, I should say. Then just before 1 a.m., someone in a car fired at another vehicle while driving near Southeast Powell and the I-205 entrance. A man and woman were hurt there. Then around the same time, two more people arrived at a local hospital saying they'd been shot during an attempted carjacking. That was by Northeast 100th and Halsey. All five victims are expected to survive. No word from police yet on suspects or arrests. That map there really putting it in perspective. Okay, for the fourth day in a row, we are going to take you back to the scene of a terrible crash. One that killed four people. We are following up because today ODOT crews cleaned up that homeless camp along with others in Salem. And you may remember this is where police say a drunk driver ran off the road and into a row of tents. Our Christine Pitawanich has more. This spot here in Northeast Salem looks a lot different than it did earlier. You can see no more tents, trash or people after ODOT crews came through and cleaned up. But before that happened, people living here rushed to collect their belongings. Garen is 24 years old and says as far back as he can remember, he's been living on the streets. It's pretty much all the stuff I have, my belongings. Wednesday morning, he began packing his stuff and helping others do the same here near the corner of Northeast Front and Division Streets in Salem. I just woke up a little bit ago by my sister telling us that we had to get out of here. We have like 45 minutes. That's because he heard crews were on their way to clean up and clear out this homeless encampment. It is a little stressful, you know. But what adds to the stress is he's still coping with the death of his friend, Luke Cagey. He, was, he just turned 21. He was one of the four people killed and two injured in the crash here on Sunday after police say a drunk driver careened into the camp around 2 a.m. This place will now hold painful memories for Garen and others who lost friends. It ain't gonna be the same coming through here. And if he does come back, it'll look a lot different cleared out and a tree taken down for safety reasons after the car crash. For now, Garen says he knows of another place he can go, a different out of the way campsite. But that's not necessarily the case for other houseless people who will need to find somewhere else to go. She puts a lot of stress on people that don't need it. 
Other houseless people I spoke to say they hope there's a better solution other than sweeps. I also spoke to an ODOT spokesperson who says crews planned to clean up 16 locations here in this area of Salem. Work is expected to continue tomorrow with additional monitoring over the next week. In Salem, Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. The Alsea School District in Benton County is facing a new lawsuit alleging former Superintendent Mark Thielman created a hostile work environment. Shannon Rice, principal of Alsea Elementary School, filed the suit. While it's against the district as a whole and does not name Thielman as a defendant, many of the allegations focus on him. The suit alleges sexual harassment, accusing Thielman of regularly making sexually suggestive comments. It also accuses Thielman of yelling at Rice when nobody was around. She's seeking $3.7 million in damages. Thielman resigned as superintendent in February, saying he wanted to focus on his campaign for governor. He's running as a Republican. The district and Thielman's campaign have not commented yet on the lawsuit. The second COVID booster shot now has the green light in Oregon and Washington. Health officials in both states have approved the booster following yesterday's federal eligibility expansion. That means you can expect the shot to be available soon in your local pharmacies. Safeway, Albertsons and Walgreens all told us today they've started giving out the boosters, assuming the specific pharmacy has the vaccine in stock. The eligibility list now includes people 50 and older, as long as it's been at least four months since your last Last shot. Previously, only people considered immunocompromised were eligible. Well, you've probably heard the term STEM, science, tech, engineering, and math. Now a school in Beaverton is making a move to encourage more young female students to pursue their dreams and their careers. Our Brian Clerkley was there. Brian, one of the reasons this is so important is because relatively few young women still go into these areas. Hey, David, that's right. The school says only about 10% of young girls want to pursue STEM careers. And this event had companies like OMSI, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and Google participating. And all the, the presenters for these companies were women. Um, now that women are getting more into these careers, um, that girls should know that it's an option for them. At Valley Catholic School in Beaverton, the focus is on careers involving science, technology, engineering, and math. 32 women working in STEM-related careers visited, covering topics from jobs at Intel and Nike to atmospheric science and careers in medicine. This interactive activity demonstrated how principles of science are used in sports. And I think it's really important that um, girls, especially like my age, um, who are going into high school and have to start thinking about what they want to do with their lives, um, see these careers. This is the first ever Women in STEM event at Valley Catholic Middle School. It was co-ed with all students participating. It was put together by the school's director of design thinking. I had a professor when I was in my my undergrad who encouraged me to go into information technology as part of my um, major and if I hadn't had that professor encourage me to do that I wouldn't have had a career in um, management consulting to start off. Steph Condor is the senior vice president of a real estate company. Her job includes working with technology and engineers to bring together housing opportunities for people from all walks of life. She says a lot of careers you might not think of require STEM knowledge. I would just say we need to encourage our women into going into those fields because they can be very dynamic and very successful. Um, it's a really important thing and it's a fantastic job. Valley Catholic Middle School isn't just focusing on STEM careers today. The school has STEM based curriculum that students are exposed to each day. And so to see what they're learning in action is um, extremely valuable for them. To and part of today's event was virtual, and this was all made possible by a $25,000 grant from the Marie Lamfram Charitable Foundation that the school applied for, David. And you know, as the son of a dual math major, 67 and 68 Purdue, my mom really a pioneer. It is great to see you got to keep trailblazing. Thank you for that story, Brian.